Football Fridays in Georgia, presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to buckle up, Georgia, as we welcome you to Grayson Community Stadium in Grayson, Georgia, where tonight the Lounge Vikings have traveled north four hours from Valdosta to take on the 10th-ranked Grayson Rams. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Auburn Tigers All-American, NFL first-round draft pick, and 15-year pro Wayne Gandy. And Wayne, for the second time in three weeks, we've got a big reunion game. Adam Carter, who led this Grayson program to a state championship in 2020, took the Lowndes job in December, now finds himself back here on the Grayson campus, going up against his former team, the Rams, and the young DB coach he hired back in 2019, the 29-year-old head coach, Santavius Bryant. Neither Coach Bryant or Coach Carter want to admit revenge. That's what's on the schedule tonight. These two teams, 3-1, and one, come in to play at a fierce play pace. Can't wait to see, especially J.D., Jeff Davis. Grayson cranking it out at 43 points per game, seventh highest scoring total in 7A. And you mentioned J.D. Davis, their quarterback. He's had a spectacular season so far. He's got five offers, including FAU and Western Michigan. And the big thing this season, 74% completion rate. He has a big arm, and you love that he can extend the play. He's going to have to make some plays, maybe having to run the ball tonight, but what an extend, uh, outstanding year he's having. Defensive side of the ball, they have one of the top linebackers in the nation, and he's just a sophomore, Tyler Atkinson. 36 offers, including Georgia, rated as high as the number two linebacker in the nation in 2026. And what a sophomore he is, a young man that can play to sideline to sideline in the box, can cover a tempo setter. He's going to have his hands full tonight with Smoke Fleming. Now this Lowndes team, 3-1 and one of the season, coming off their first losing record since 1994. So Coach Adam Carter's got his work to do. They bring back, though, their dynamic running back, Jakari Fleming, who has 13 offers, including Troy. He is the offense. This young man right here, exciting to watch him run the ball inside, outside. His ability to get to the edge probably will be key to this team having success offensively tonight. But just watch this young man. He is a special running back. And on the defensive side of the ball, they also have a great Mike linebacker in Coleman Lewis, who has 18 offers, including Auburn and UCF. A big three-star linebacker in the middle, probably up about 225, as coach says. But what a run stopper he is. What a player. Can't wait to see Lewis. And, and Tyler go at it on the defensive ends for these teams. So it's the Lowndes Vikings and the Grayson Rams meeting for the second consecutive regular season. Let's go ahead and get this carousel started and send it off to John Nelson. We start our part of the carousel, Matt, here with the Grayson student body decked out in their red, white, and blue. They're ready for battle. Adam Carter also was ready for battle. He wants to be prepared for nights like this, long road trips, getting into the playoffs. But here is their travel plan. They left this morning, not last night. They went to Macon, stopped at a rest stop on I-475, but one of the buses didn't have AC. Drove from there to Athens, hung out at UGA for a little bit, drove here. Maybe they've got the adventures and travel out of their system. The student body is ready to go. They wanted to show a movie on the bus, and the person coming up knows exactly what movie that was. Nikki Nota Palmer, what's going on over there? Oh, John, you're wild as ever. And hey, you left out the best part of that story. When we were talking to Coach Carter, I guessed that it was 300, right? You're traveling up north, your AC goes out. That movie's going to make you want to run through a brick wall. And speaking of brick walls, the Grayson Rams, they know a little thing or two about their program being a brick wall. They don't let many people out of this program with a victory. That's right, in 12 seasons, they have won 10 or more games. So Coach Bryant knew exactly the type of team that he was taking over. We're live tonight from Loganville, but we're also live over at the Eagle's Nest. That's right, our web game of the week is North Cobb at Milton. You can follow along by going to gpb.org slash sports or by checking out our GPB Sports app. And hey, while you're there, you're gonna see a QR code right there on your screen. Go ahead and vote for our poll question of the week. Who's gonna win? Is it gonna be Lowndes or is it gonna be Grayson? We're gonna have a good game for you coming right up. And also coming up at halftime, we will have our Make That Kid an Offer seg segment, as well as the You Save It Pharmacy Player Spotlight. That'll do it from the field. It's officially game time. Matt, Wayne, Nelly, take it away. Thank you, Nikki. Absolute beautiful night here on this Friday night in Grayson, Georgia. Grayson Rams 
Lounge Vikings meeting for just the sixth time all time, but the second consecutive regular season a year ago, they went to Lounge and Lounge a 24-14 winner over Grayson when their now head coach, Adam Carter, was coaching the Rams. And Coach Carter, he's excited to be back in town, but he says his, his family is grateful to be down in South Georgia with this program that he's trying to breathe life back into with the Vikings and this Grayson team, you know, they're going to be playing with a lot of energy to try to defeat their former coach. Grayson won the opening toss, and they have deferred. So that means we'll see the Lowndes Vikings on offense to begin this game. Lowndes suffered their first loss of the season a week ago when they lost at home to East Coweta, 42-30. Rams have been off a couple of weeks since knocking off Spartanburg, South Carolina, 21-19. And the opening kickoff is brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Buckle Up Georgia. Seatbelts save lives. Jakari Fleming and Marlon MJ Evans standing deep for the Vikings. And that ball is going to bounce into the end zone, so the Vikings are going to start at the 20 yard line and Wayne our first chance to see their junior quarterback Marvis Parrish 5'10 177 and a second year starter he has four offers including UMass but he's likely going to be a running back at the next level not the biggest of quarterbacks at 5'10 around 180 but his coach loves that he's a cool customer he has a nice arm when he can set his feet but look for him to make some plays running the ball tonight See Parrish's numbers on the season, 54%, 461 through the air, five touchdowns and three interceptions. And the first handoff of the game goes to Fleming, and Fleming gets Precious Little trying to run it in the middle. Dakai Banks, the safety, made the tackle for the Rams to get this game started. And you see D.J. Jones, he's committed to Coastal Carolina. Ben Corhey, the right guard, he's the big-time prospect in the future already has six offers and then Sifa Proctor Fleming Eisenhower the tight end and Carter Eisenhower having to step in after their tight end their three-star tight end Grant Lasky suffered a knee injury in practice this week and he's done for the season and you see right off the bat getting the ball to smoke Fleming a guy that has to have a big game for them to have a chance here tonight, especially with their starting tight end being out. But Mr. Fleming is very durable, and they're going to have to try to do just what they do on first and second down, run the ball, eat the clock, create third and short, where Parrish can make plays with his feet. And Eisenhower, who is the backup tight end and a freshman, a big one, was in the backfield there. And the pass is thrown, and it's incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. Nice job there by Proctor finding the softness in that zone. Just missing there is Marvis Parrish. You can see eight comes into your screen, out of the left of your screen. Nice, just missing him right there on that throw. Those are the kind of throws he's going to have to make against his zone tonight. Their punter is a good one, Carson Page, averaging 34 yards per kick. He's committed to Georgia Tech to play baseball. He's a shortstop for the state champion Vikings baseball team. Woods calls fair catch and makes it at the 37-yard line. And that's where the Rams are going to go on offense following a 38-yard punt by Carson Page. And J.D. Davis makes his way out onto the field. 6'2", 194 senior returning starter. You mentioned it, Wayne, 74% completion rate, averaging 237 yards passing per game. He's fifth in 7A with 947 total yards. And look at that. Zero interceptions to go along with his 13 touchdowns. High-powered offense, and it's led by him. He has a big arm and can make things happen with his feet. And he's going to use his feet on the opening play, and he's going to pick up a first down across the 50. And down to the 46, where he's driven out of bounds by the linebacker, Cameron Rigdon. Nice job. Quarterback design, good blocking up front. He does have the ability. Hasn't shown it a lot this year so far, but he can run the ball, as you can see. To the air they go, and Sanchez with the catch. Sanchez down to the 36-yard line, and that'll be another first down for the Rams, but there is a flag out. As we take a look at the Rams up front, it's brought to you by Regents Bank. 
Flynn is rated the number one interior offensive lineman in the country for 2024. He plays left tackle for the Rams along with Egby, Hudson, the Messier, and Threet. The wide receiver, Sinius Taylor Fox, is one of the top tight ends in the country, and Sanchez, who just made the catch. Elijah Miller, the starting running back tonight. Holding, offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. So that'll wipe out the first down catch by Jeff Sanchez. Or Alex Sanchez, pardon me. Can this Vikings defense stand up to this fast paced offense? As you see, Grayson likes to get the plays in and out, keep tempo and pressure against the defense. First and 10 from the 43, ball is thrown complete across midfield. And down to the 48-yard line, that was Aiden Taylor making the catch for Grayson. He picks up 11. Back on the ball, ready to go, play in. Pass up in the air and nearly intercepted by K.J. Massey, who already has three picks this season. Take a look at Lowndes on defense, Brooks, Contreras, and Whitlock up front. Linebackers Parker, Lewis, and Rigdon. And in the secondary, Brown, Carter, Thomas, Massey, and Evans. It's going to be third down. Swing pass out to Miller, the running back. And Elijah Miller is going to battle down to the 41-yard line, but not pick up the first down. It's going to be about fourth and four. And Wayne, do they uh, go for it here? I think Coach Bryant is really thinking about going for it in this situation. But you can see he's sending his his punt team out. But I believe he trusts his defense in these situations that if they need it to at any moment, they could go for it in those down and distances. Ryan Ortega on the punt for Grayson. Ball's going to go way off to the right. Nowhere near Fleming, the return man, and roll dead at the 19-yard line. And that's where the Vikings will put it in play with their second possession of the game after this timeout. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine when a car in front of you crosses over the line. They're in your space, not looking at your face. Distracted drivers all over the place. Say, we will, we will buckle up. Sing it. Say, we will, we will buckle up. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Welcome back to Grayson. It's time to catch up with our friends from the Grayson community and present our check to our, from our friends from Cigna to uh, A.D. Brian DeBerry, great friend here at Football Fridays, the $1,500 donation. Once again, thanks for being a great friend to GPB and a great friend to Football Fridays. Thank you. Welcome me, Tom. Appreciate it. Man of few words. He always says it. He gets right to the point. $1,500 donation to our friends at Grayson from our friends from Signal. Send it back upstairs to Matt. All right, thank you, Wayne, or thank you, John, and Wayne's next to me right here <laughs> as we get ready to see the Vikings go on offense for the second time. Santarius Bryant, 29-year head coach, 29-year-old head coach of the Grayson Rams. He is so young, if you do a Google search of him, you'll, see, you'll still find his huddle page <laughs> and his max prep stats when he played at Wheeler High School. Not that long ago. That's a backwards pass. And Sifa is going to be dropped for a loss back at the 15-yard line. Nice. Looked like Sifa wanted to throw it. Trying to go with the double pass there. Nice job by Andre Fuller continually hustling, bringing down Sifa. Here's Grayson on defense, brought to you by Regions Bank. Smith, McKenzie, and Fuller up front. Bell, Woods, Banks, Woods, and Points. Neither of the Woods are related. That's the secondary. And you also have E.K. Pichwu, Atkinson, and Moncrief in the linebacking core. Fleming on the carry, and Fleming barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. 
Nice job there by E.K. Peach Wu, number 17. I know that's a mouthful, Mike, <laughs> uh, Matt, uh, but nice job getting to the outside, trying to attack on the end with Fleming, but Peach Wu right there bringing him down. Nice job by him in the open field. So third down and long for the Vikings. And a flag dropped on the play before the snap. False start. Offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Right here, if you're Lyles, you have to really consider this down and distance. It's not something you're very comfortable with. It, the kind of offense that you run, look for a screen, something out on the edge, maybe a draw. You want to be real safe and not give up a turnover in this situation if you're the Viking offense. Adam Carter, the third head coach for the Vikings in the last four seasons. Pass thrown complete, and that's Proctor, and he gets dropped right away by E.K. Pichwu, and it's going to be fourth down. Nice job getting out. Pichwu, only about 170, plays more like a, a safety than a Sam Backer. Nice tackle, getting in the legs right there. Of Proctor and bringing him down for only a three-yard gain. Aiden Taylor is standing deep. And the punt by Page comes down at the 47, calls fair catch again. And that's where the Rams are going to put the ball in play for the second time. 34-yard punt by Page this time as we take a look at the Breda Pass management keys to the game. Just taking care of the ball, the kind of offense that you run, the production that you have, the way that your quarterback – uh, J.D., Jeff Davis is playing. Take care of the ball. Don't beat yourself. And on defense for Lowndes, can't give up the deep ball. That has been your weakness defensively. The talent that they have for Grayson, love to go deep. You can't fall asleep on these short passes. They will try to get behind you. Dylan Elder in there at running back. He's been out since the first series of the season. Suffered an ankle sprain against Walton. In the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic on the very first series of the season has not played until now. Young man with a lot of talent dealing with that ankle injury, but you have to imagine he's very eager to get back on this field. He has five offers, including UAB, East Carolina, and FAU, a senior running back, 5'10, 195. Play action. Davis dances around back there. Going to throw on the run and complete it the 33 to Sanchez. Sanchez slips a tackle inside the 20. Alexander Sanchez, just one of those big receivers out on the edge. Hard to bring down. Nice job. Good pickup there by Elder. Just nowhere to go with the ball. Scrambling around is Davis. Big target. 6'3", 190, Sanchez down the field. Elder gets the carry, just his third carry of the season, and barrels down to the 12-yard line. Tempo, tempo, tempo for this Grayson offense. Elder gets a second carry. Tries to get to the edge, will not be able to. Nice play by the pony, K.J. Massey. Nice job of Massey not letting Elder be able to bounce that to the outside. As you can see with this offense, Negative play, positive play, regardless. They stay tempo, try to keep pressure on you. Third down and four. To the air, and Sinius with the catch right there at the first down marker. Nice job by Sinius. Recognizing down in distance, getting to the marker, making yourself big for your quarterback. This is just throw and catch. A little high on the pass, but nice job of going and grabbing that. Now Davis is going to run to the far side of the field and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Ten-yard touchdown run for J.D. Davis, his third rushing touchdown of the season. It puts the Rams on top. Talked about it in that first drive. This young man has the ability to scramble, and he can run right there. Didn't like that slant on the right side. Pull the ball, bounce it to the outside. Big frame, 6'2", 195. As you can see, didn't like the play. That's that leadership, that maturity that his coach Bryant talked about. He's shown this season getting into the end zone. The PTA 
JT is off the mark. This has not been one of their strengths. They missed the PAT and the score remains 6 nothing. But an impressive drive for the Rams to score their first touchdown of the game as J.D. Davis takes it in. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit, member-owned DMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you. Generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Welcome back to Britt Moody. Sixes are wild. Grayson with the first six on the board. 6.16 to go here, first quarter at Grayson. How do you make this a multi-screen experience? Well, I'll tell you. Go to gbb.org slash sports. Check out our web game, 3-1 Milton, hosting 2-2 two two North Cobb. Right now, 7-0. Milton is driving less than a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Milton's in their dress blacks tonight. Very, very sharp look. North Cobb trying to keep them from getting a second score on the board late first quarter. You can dial it up on your phone or however you wish to do so. gbb.org slash sports. The multi-screen experience brought to us by our friends at Bray to pest management, great to pest management, the official pest control of high school football. I got my phone, Matt's got his, Wayne's got his. The rest of the first is theirs too. Thank you, Nelly, as Lowndes get ready to receive the kickoff here. Tolu Adeyemi, who just missed the PAT, will kick it off again. And for the second consecutive kick, he puts it in the end zone. So the Vikings again have to start at the 20 yard line. Can this offensive line in this run game create enough success tonight to give Lions a chance? And that's what we got to figure out in this game uh, right now. Uh, in those first two drives, not able to cre create any first downs. And they came into this game to try to drive the ball, play field position, and they're losing that battle at the moment. Well, this Lions team's been hit hard by injuries. We mentioned Grant Lasky's out for the season with the knee injury suffered in practice. Aline Brown, their number two running back, is not available tonight because of injury as well. And Jakari Fleming gets stonewalled in the line of scrimmage. Tyler Atkinson leading the way as we take a look at the Breda Pest management keys to the game. Staying on the field, that's the big key for the this Lions offense, being able to drive the ball, put some first downs together, let your defense rest. And on defense for Grayson, no big plays. You got a lot of talent, especially in that front seven, a great secondary. Just keep things in front of you. Don't give up the easy points. And Fleming gets hit again immediately. Very little running room. As the Rams have been very aggressive on defense. Screaming off that edge is Mickey Rivas here. You can see him 14. Just no chance for that play to succeed there. No hat on him coming in, getting into the legs of, of Jakari Fleming, bringing him down. Yeah, Mikey Rivas. His dad is Darrell Rivas' cousin. Third down and eight. They know a little something about, about playing <laughs> defensive back in that family. Now we see why he can make that kind of tackle right there. Defense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Andre Fuller just a little anxious there on that slant, this defensive front. With Fuller, McKenzie, we haven't talked about much yet. But what a year he's having. Smith on the other side, 99. They love the stunt. 
They can line up in any of those position in this 3-3-5 defense. Third down and three. Vikings still looking for their first first down. Parrish wants to go to the air, goes to the far side, and out of bounds. Trying to connect with Jalen Carter, who's been their top wide receiver. And it's going to be fourth down. Once again, a three and out here for this Rams defense. It's been playing at a high level so far through the first four games. Started off sluggish there in game one against Walton. But ever since then, this defense is, is, is really getting after it. Carson Page is punting for the third time already. We're just seven minutes into the game. Woods going to take it at the 39. Miles Woods comes to the near side and going to be dragged down by the linebacker, Coleman Lewis, making the play on special teams. So the Rams go back on offense, up 6 nothing. Quick game, getting the ball out of Davis's hand was key in that first drive and tempo. They just kept the tempo. As a, whether it's a negative play, positive play, they're back at the line. They're attacking, and they really feel, you can see in those first couple of drives, they can work out on the outside against this secondary. This is our sixth possession of the game already, Wayne, just seven minutes in, primarily because it's been three three and outs for the Vikings. Amari Alston gets his first carry of the game as he gets close to eight on the play up to the 50-yard line. The Messier and the threat there on that right side. Nice combo block there in the middle to the next level and just a hard run there by Alston. Play action pass thrown and intercepted at the 43-yard line. Picked off by MJ Evans. Nice job there by Evans going down low to get this ball here. Just an errant throw here by Davis. First turnover of the season. He felt that pressure coming off the edge in his face. Not able to step into the throw. Rigdon, 31, pressure in his face. Overthrowing the receiver there, Sanchez, and a nice job breaking on the ball after it was tipped by MJ Evans. That is the 10th interception for this Vikings team this year. They've committed now or produced 14 takeaways on defense. Let's see if they can do anything with it now. RPO, they're going to give it to Fleming, and Fleming going to be dropped for a loss. Just can't run against this Grayson defense. Dakai Banks, the middle safety, who's 6'5", 168 pounds. Fleming trying to get to the edge. Nice job. Banks, a big, just first year at safety, former outside linebacker. Great job of him showing you that speed. Not used to having that kind of height in the secondary, as you can see. Just a guy that athletically can pull it off. Parrish back to pass. Now going to have to run, and E.K. Pichwu. E.K. Pichwu is going to drop him for the quarterback sack. Just nowhere to go with the ball. Trying to set up the screen to the outside. Didn't feel comfortable with it right here. As you can see, trying to set up the screen, and then... Peach Wu coming in and cleaning up house. Having a big quarter, number 17 so far. First quarterback sack of the season for Kel E.K. Peach Wu, the 6'1", 167 senior. And that's 11 and a half sacks for the Rams now this season. Parrish in trouble. Another quarterback sack. E.K. Peach Wu again. Nice job trying to roll. Parrish out here to the left, just slipping out to the outside, wrapping up the quarterback, just nowhere to go. Third and long just against this defense is going to be tough sledding for the Vikings. Nice job. E.K. Pichu making big plays here in this first quarter. Fourth punt already for Page. Here in the first quarter, Woods calls fair catch and makes it at the 25-yard line. That's a 43-yard kick. Their most effective weapon so far has been their punter, Carson Page. Hey, Coach, Coach Carter talked about Page having to help the team out on special teams. He has to continue to have booming kicks, trying to keep the field balanced, 
and not give up short drives to this Rams offense. So this will be the eighth possession. Of the first quarter. Spreading them out, trips right down by the numbers on your screen. Davis looking deep, now throws a long out complete to Aiden Taylor, and that'll be a first down at the 38-yard line. Good protection there by the offensive line. That play took a long time to develop. Fake the short screen underneath there to Sanchez, and then finding Taylor down the field was Davis. All kinds of time for Taylor. Now it breaks down and he runs across the 50 and down to the 48 where Cameron Rigdon makes the tackle. But another first down as again, Davis is able to use his legs to pick up a first down. Tempo, tempo, tempo. That's how the Rams like to attack you. Nice job of not making a mistake trying to throw the ball by Davis. This time Davis gets buried by Coleman Lewis. Not fooled there at all. There's that young man in the middle, the junior linebacker, Coleman Lewis, just, just a player. When, when you get those titles from your coach, a player, a dude, <laughs> that lets you know that he's a high-level player, the three-star with multiple offers. Yeah, he's a junior, and he already has. This is already his third season starting. Elijah Miller right up the middle. And Miller all the way down to the 33-yard line. Nice find, great vision there by Miller, all-purpose back coming on that left side. Great pull and kick out there by the Messier, the right guard. Caught inside the 10, touchdown Grayson. Aiden Taylor with the touchdown catch from J.D. Davis. And the Rams have taken a 12-0 lead on the 33-yard touchdown pass. Tempo. And that drive right there by Grayson is what created that play to Aiton Taylor running out of the slot, free down the field, busted coverage on the back end. Defense not sure who has Taylor, as you can see. Nice job there. And that was all created by the tempo. Good throw, nice find. Taylor into the end zone. So this time, Michael Ham will try the PAT. And that kick is good. 13-0, Grayson is bolted out to a two-touchdown lead on Lowndes. Only a three-man rush, good protection. And right there, just getting behind the DB is Taylor. As you see him working down the field, great route runner. It's number six. Taylor's third touchdown catch of the season. And he's been a guy that's, you know, caught balls all over the field. His pass receiving chart sprayed all over the field as you take a look at the governor's red ribbon campaign. Scoring drive, five plays, 74 yards, took less than a minute. Vikings in some trouble here. They're down two scores, and they haven't even picked up a first down yet. And that'll make Coach Brian happy when you can get five plays in in 56 seconds on a field. You're at a high tempo. That's how they like to attack you. What a great job in that drive, knowing what they wanted to do. Taylor having two big catches for the Grayson Rams. Rams also have an 8-0 lead on first downs in the first quarter. Adeyemi ready to kick off. His prior two kicks have gone into the end zone. This one will be returnable from the five. Fleming will not make it back to the 20. Stopped at the 17 yard line as we take a look at the Lowndes Vikings resume. It's brought to you by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Five time state champions 2019 they were the state runners up they've won 14 region titles randy mcpherson the all-time winningest coach in program history a program that started in 1966. pass complete to proctor and proctor scrambles forward to the 26. 
First mission of this Lions offense in this drive, they have to create a couple of first downs and let their defense rest. Right now, they can't have another three and out and send the defense back. Uh, this Grayson offense is at, moving at a high pace and wearing them down. Good power running there up the middle by Smoke Fleming. That'll get them their first first down of the game. There's no doubt, they've got to give their defense a bit of a break here. If nothing else, move it out to about the 50 and flip the field and try to pin them deep with Carson Page. I know being down 13 nothing this early makes you want to panic, but All you don't start. have to panic. Offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. DJ Jones, the left tackle, the three star headed to Coastal Carolina. Just moving a little early, setting the sticks back. And that was Adam Carter's worst nightmare. He knew they could not get behind the sticks because then you unleash Tyler Atkinson in that defense to come after your quarterback. And they've already got two quarterback sacks here in the first quarter, both of them by E.K. Peachwood. Up top and trying to connect with Carter. Tight coverage over here on the near sideline. They're going to get points there. A little handsy on Jalen Carter running down the sideline. Coming from the middle of the field, the back ref feeling like he was just grabbing too much. Pass interference. Defense, 15-yard penalty results in a first down. And you can see Coach Bryant right there. He's questioning why did the referee from the middle of the field make that call and not the one on the sideline. That brings the ball out to the 41-yard line. Take another look at it right there. Right, right there. You see that left hand of points is pulling on that back shoulder of Jalen Carter. Fleming gets stonewalled again. Andre Fuller knocks him back. What a big time prospect he is. 6'3, 216. Andre Fuller. Let's go say he's one of those freak accidents, quick, uh, <laughs> freak athletes, quick off the ball. But look at the body type. Only a junior. And that will get us to the end of the first quarter. First quarter dominated by the Grayson Rams. J.D. Davis has run for a touchdown, and he's thrown for one. 13-0 So we head to the second. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face got me feeling so kind of way. of an eye so many tomorrows can disappear buckle up for your future every trip every time a message from the governor's office of highway safety welcome back to grayson community stadium Britt moody field one quarter in the books and it's been all grayson so far home team up 13 nothing as we get you ready for the second 12 minutes speaking of numbers and double digits Three times in this program's history, meaning Grayson, they won 14 games or more. Two 14s and a 15. Last time they won 14 was when the last time that they won a state championship. Jake Garcia was the show. You want to talk about a high-powered offense? They scored 38 in the championship game. 
dominating Collins Hill. Adam Carter said about this game, I looked up and it was 28-0. They impressed me in this one. 14 wins in a row. They ran the table. Last title for Grayson here, Matt. Hallowed ground here for Adam Carter. No doubt about it, and that was one of the most talented teams we've ever seen in the state's history. A convincing victory and convincing state championship for the Grayson Rams that night, and now the head coach who led them to that state championship over there on the lounge sideline. Parrish goes to the air, and that's the first time they've been able to connect with Jalen Carter, and he's across the 50 down to the 49. The big big play guy right there, Jalen Carter, have to get the ball in his hands consistently tonight to have a chance. He's a guy that just needs the ball. Fleming just cannot run anywhere on this Grayson defense. Darren McKenzie, the nose guard, making the tackle. Big number 44. Swimming off the tackle, not the biggest of the linemen, but what a year he's had. He's just an impactful player sliding up and down that defensive line, 5'10", about 255, just having a lights-out season for Grayson. And Page on the punt yet again. Fair catch is called for, backpedaling to the 10-yard line. Aiden Taylor making the catch. That's a 41-yard punt by Carson Page. As we take a look at the Grayson resume, presented by DBHDD. Three-time state champions. You saw the last one there in that video highlight that John was talking about in 2020. Four semifinal finishes, 12 region titles. Mickey Kahn, the all-time winningest coach in Grayson history, now on Dabo Sweeney's staff at Clemson. The program started in 2000. Handoff goes to Elder. He comes to the near side. And Elder with a nice run up to the 31-yard line. Nice job of bouncing that to the backside there behind Walt Flynn. Dunn Eggby. Good kick out block out in the open field. He, you can see the energy he has, as you talked about, Matt. Hadn't played since the first series of the first game. That was a 21-yard pickup for him on that prior run. J.D. Davis there picks up a couple. So impressed with how he's running his offense. Just seems so sure of, it, sure of himself while he's in the pocket. Really has blossomed into a top flight quarterback here in his senior season. Play action. Davis going to take off and run again. Very dangerous with those legs of his. Ball comes out at the end of the play. They're going to rule him down by contact at the 48. 17-yard pickup and another first down for Grayson. Nice job. Not forcing it. Didn't feel he had anything open down the field. Good initial pressure uh, to get him out of the pocket. Out in the open field. Has definitely shown to have more speed than I think the Lions think, uh, felt like he had. But he's a great runner out in the open field as Davis. Short game by Elder. Coleman Lewis coming off that pile. Ball at the 47. Davis throws again to Cineus this time. That's another first down at the 36-yard line. 12-yard pickup. Nice job of Cineus on this route. Cutting it short. Coming back to the ball for his quarterback to pick that up. You have to love how these receivers, Cinea Sanchez, they run after the catch. Ball goes out to Sanchez this time on the screen, and he reaches the 27 before being driven back. Eight-yard pickup for Sanchez. Big That's target. his second catch of the game. Sanchez seeing him out on the field, about 190, only a junior. Alston in the game and carrying the ball. Austin going to streak to the end zone for the touchdown. Outstanding patience. Amari Austin showed on that play. Bouncing it to the outside off of that left side. Watch the patience as he comes around. Just kind of stutter stepping and then hits you with the speed. One of those players, Coach Bryant said, even in practice, he makes you hold your breath. You never know what he might do. He's so dynamic. 
is Amari Alston. Third touchdown of the season for Alston. The junior running back who's been offered by Western Kentucky and Grayson out to a 19-0 lead here in the first 15 minutes of this game. There's a flag down on the field After as the well. touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, 15-yard penalty, we enforce from the kickoff. Well, it did not matter that they were able to pin Grayson back at their 10-yard line. Took them just seven plays to go the 90 yards. And the PAT is up, and it is good. And a 20 to nothing lead for the Grayson Rams. Amari Alston does a great job. You mentioned it, Wayne. The stutter step. Boom, boom. And there he goes to the outside. And a 20 to nothing lead for Grayson. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit member-owned EMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Just looking. I only buy local and sustainable, so. Oh, well that shirt's not local. You should be wearing cotton. Georgia's a major supplier of cotton worldwide, so if you'd like to buy local to support Georgia, buying cotton's a great place to start. It's renewable and sustainable, naturally. Thanks. Now that's a polyester fiber made of oil. By the way, where's your dressing room? Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Grayson is bolted out to a 20 to nothing lead on Lowndes. Governor's Red Ribbon campaign scoring drive. Seven plays, 90 yards. Number 12, Amari Alston taking it in from 25 yards out. 122 yards rushing, Wayne, for Grayson. Lowndes has three. We came in this game thinking it would try to be on the flip side of that where Lowndes would establish the run, but right now with the tempo, and the athlete, especially out in space, uh, this Grayson Ram offense is just high powered and doing a great job. Grayson, 240 total yards. Lowndes has 26. Kick coming down at the 10 yard line. And Fleming somersaults across the 32 to the 34. And that's where the Vikings will try to get some offense going here early in the second quarter. The one thing that this Grayson defense has done a great job of is not letting any of these lounge skill players get to the outside. We've seen a couple of times where Smoke Fleming tries to use his speed to bounce it to the outside, but with EK Peach Wu and Fuller and those guys, they're doing a great job of making sure everything stays inside, and they're just not having a lot of success being able to move the ball. Fleming gets maybe a yard on the play. Once again, Darren McKenzie, 44 in there. Can't talk him. He's just having a great season for this defense. One of those guys that's just been around and waited his turn. Parrish, oh my goodness. Heat-seeking missile named Tyler Atkinson with the TFL. Keep your eyes on 16. This young man has a bright future just out of nowhere. 
Just beating the right guard, Benjamin Corhe, to the point of attack and had bad intentions when he got there. Tyler Atkinson, only a sophomore. I watched him on film. Looks like a San Francisco Fred Warner out there on the field. Just a guy that can do everything from the linebacker spot. Parrish to the air, overthrows his target, Sipa, and it's going to be fourth down. And Carson Page is going to come on and punt again. Another three and out for this Lions offense and Grayson and the way they are attacking. Just has their number right now in this first half. His sixth punt of the half. Ball is fielded at the 19-yard line, and that's where the Rams will go back on offense. That was a 47-yard boot by Carson Page. I think we might have a flag down on the field as well at the 32. Still no indication from the officials just yet. We've got an illegal formation on the kicking team. The five-yard penalty will be enforced at the return spot. We saw Santavius Bryant, the 29-year-old head coach of the Grayson Rams. He was hired by Adam Carter to be his DB coach in 2019. He was with Adam for three seasons, jumped over to Gainesville last year, and that team that got to the state championship game working with Josh Niblett. And when Adam Carter left for Lowndes, Santavius Bryant emerged as the leading candidate based on his relationships that he had established with the community and the players in this program. It's been a great fit so far. Miller, Elijah Miller all the way down to the 43-yard line. Great blocking up front, center Hudson off that right side. Just a counter power play there. Good kick out block by Kylon Fox. We haven't called his name much for catching, but he's doing a great job of blocking his Fox. And right now, the run game of the Rams is, is high octane, and these young men are Elijah Miller showing that great speed. Continuing to play with great tempo as Elder back in the game at running back. Davis, he has his check down, going to throw it instead mid range to Taylor. And Aiden Taylor down to the 22 yard line. Great patience there by Davis. He has Dylan Elder running right in his face. He could drop the ball to him at any point, but he didn't feel threatened. He waited on Taylor to crumb across the field. Good delivery of the ball. Davis this time going to be met by Muttenton in the hole. Alvaro Muttenton making the tackle. As much as it is about the talent of this offense, I think the tempo is just really just wearing at this Vikings defense. They've been on the field consistently tonight, but this tempo play in, play out is really messing them up. To the air, caught, touchdown, Grayson. And Ethan Cantress with the 22-yard touchdown, catching it 26 to nothing. J.D. Davis made plays with his feet, this time using his arm here. He knew exactly where he wanted to go this ball. Ethan Pantras there making a man miss out in the open field, something we've talked about all night long with this receiving core. But Mr. Davis knew where he wanted to go with the ball, kind of got lost by the defense there once again, as we talked about with that tempo. Nice job of Ethan Pantras getting into the end zone. PAT is going to be no good. That's the second one that they have missed tonight. Twenty-six to nothing. Lee Grayson has dominated in the first 18 minutes of this game. Seeing that Grayson offense used the outside was quick game 
early in the game. Then that opened up the running game as we've seen Austin Miller and Elder come alive. And now, once again, tacking out on the edge, Davis there to Contreras to really start wearing at this Vikings defense. Yemi teeing it up. Grayson trying to snap a three game losing streak in this very short all time series. Sixth all time meeting here tonight. Four of them have come in the playoffs. And this is just the second time they've ever played in the regular season, coming in back to back years. And Addy Yemi's kick is going to go into the end zone. So, Wayne, what would you suggest? I mean, they just have had no success at all on the offensive side of the ball. It's apparent they're not going to be able to run against Grayson. You got to ask Marvis Paris and his offense once again to go out, start trying to put first downs together. He, as we talked about, is very capable of running. A lot of people see him maybe at the next level as a running back, maybe start calling more design runs for him. But they have to put a couple of first downs, as we said. The defense is wearing out. They've had a lot of three and outs, and, and they've had no success really throwing the ball and getting behind the defense of the Rams. One first down for the Vikings in this game. The Rams have 15 already, and Fleming gets knocked to the ground by Miles Woods. Miles Woods, the three-star. Nice tackle out in the open field by them. Good protection. Good pass. Better hit right there by Miles Woods. Only listed at 160. Personal foul. Defense. 15-yard penalty out on the end of the run. First down. That's I didn't see the personal foul. I mean, it was a hard hit, but it looked like a clean, legitimate football hit in my book. Yeah, no sense. He didn't leave his feet. Not sure. Lower to shoulder, shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder into the chest. Didn't really see what made that a personal foul right there. Unless there was a personal foul somewhere else because that was not a personal foul. Parrish going to step out of bounds at the sticks. Chandler Burton, the backup linebacker in there, 31, screaming off the edge. Just no time to set his feet there for Parrish to even take a look down the field. Nice job by him coming off that edge with the pressure. Second down and 11 coming up. Ball dropped by Jeremiah Jones. It's third down. And this is the down and distance that this Viking defense just not capable against such speed that the Rams bring the pass rushers that they have with Nazir Smith and Fuller, guys like Tyler Atkinson who can line up and, and rush the passer. This offensive line, we, we know it needed a big game to try to stay in it, but this down and distance here is third and 11, just not really built. So third and 11. Heavy rush coming off the edge, clean pocket, thrown to Carter, and that'll be a first down for the Vikings at the 46-yard line. They'll spot him at the 47 with his forward motion. Nice stop route there by Jalen Carter. Just getting to the sticks, barely getting to the sticks. Good protection, able this time to pick up the blitzing. Burden coming off the edge, and this is all about Jalen Carter wanting a first down for his team. 15th catch of the season for Jalen Carter as Jakari Fleming is grabbing his midsection, is what we'll call it. 
cannot afford to lose Smoke Fleming. What a season he is having for his team. Came into the game almost eight yards a carry, eight touchdowns. Second down coming up after the run by Fleming. He comes off the field. First appearance by Flanagan at running back. He stays in the block. Parrish looking, throws it, throws it away. What closing speed there by Tyler Atkinson. We saw him with the big tackle this time, coming from the middle of the field, looking more like a safety. It's number 16, but look at this time. Look at the distance. We're talking about a guy, Marvin Parrish, who is very capable of being a running back. And you can just see the speed there, that young man. Yeah, Atkinson was one of the many big time prospects at the Georgia South Carolina game last Saturday. And he's got 36 offers, the Bulldogs among them. The number two prospect in the state of Georgia in the sophomore class. Off the edge, unabated. Atkinson separates Parrish from the ball. And Parrish hasn't gotten up yet. Just a big hit there by Atkinson coming unblocked with his kind of speed and size here. As you can see, nobody takes him. Mm. And just a big hit from the blind side there on Parrish. Hopefully he's okay. You can see maybe his face mask hitting him right in the back of the neck. But good to see him up and walking off. But that young man right there has to be accounted for, as we said. One of those guys that can easily slide out and rush the passer. And only a sophomore, so he grows a couple of more inches, and that might be where you have to put him coming off the edge. Yeah, he might be a DN. He might be a DN. 23 total yards for the Vikings here in the first half. Timeout called by Grayson. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at GARedRibbon.org. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future, every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. As morning light signals the start of business, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are right there with you. Georgia's EMCs are a partner in economic development, serving commercial accounts big and small that drive Georgia's economy. From leading industries we rely on to local shops we treasure. We support operations on the ground, care around the clock, and growth through the seasons. Lighting up good business, so business is good. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Welcome back to Grayson Community Stadium. We're live in Loganville for the Lounge Grayson game, and right now the Rams are running away with it. 26 to nothing with five minutes before the half. We're gonna have our region's halftime show coming up. You're gonna wanna stick with us. We'll have our Make That Kid an offer segment. That's a little thing we like to do where we highlight some of these student athletes that we feel like need a little bit of love when it comes to the recruiting world because they're out there working really hard and making some great plays. We'll also have our You Save It Pharmacy Player Spotlight. It's a great story. You don't wanna miss it. It's all coming up at halftime. Stick to GPB. Can't wait. Looking forward to it, Nikki. Carson Page on the punt for the seventh time already here in the first half. Heavy rush gets it out of there. And fair catch is called for, made at the 24-yard line. 33-yard kick by Page that time. Miles Woods with the catch. And Grayson goes back on offense already with a four-touchdown lead in this game. 
And it's all been about the tempo of this Rams offense, getting the ball out quick. Davis hitting the receivers, receivers running after the catch, and then it became all about the run game. We've seen these backs starting to make six, eight yards of rush as they continue to grow as a unit. Miller and Austin, very impressive speed. Dylan Eller, number three, back in the mix now. Pass goes to Taylor out here on the edge. Aiden Taylor will step out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Aiden Taylor, crafty wide receiver, averaging just under 11 yards per catch. Came in with 17 receptions on the season, and he's picked up four more here tonight. One yard pickup for J.D. Davis that time. He started his career at Warner Robins and transferred to Grayson in January of 2022. Had a pretty good season last year, but he's really put things all together here as a senior. Had a great offseason. Coach Bryan felt like he should expect to have a big year. His maturity and the leadership he's shown has been the key, as his coach talked about. Ball complete to Sinius, and Sinius up to the 40-yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Rams. O'Shea Brooks, number 47, looked like maybe he tipped that ball, but still able to get the ball out to Sinius. Running a tunnel screen over there on the opposite side to Sanchez, and actually lost about a foot on the play that time, but this high-powered offense directed by the offensive coordinator Cody Neal and also the quarterback coach. He's with G.J. Kenny at Incarnate Word last year when they rolled up more than 50 points per game. And of course, Coach Kenny now at Texas State. Ball out, recovered by the Rams after the quarterback sack by O'Shea Brooks on J.D. Davis. Good protection initially, just nowhere to go with the ball, getting some happy feet. Nice job of O'Shea Brooks using great technique, coming down, not slapping that ball down from the backside, creating this third and long here for the Grayson Rams. The first time they've been able to come up with a big defensive play. Pocket breaks down a little bit and thrown right there in the middle and caught by Sanchez. And he's going to be dropped at the 46, 12-yard pickup, but going to be four yards shy of the first down. And a big break there for Lyons Vikings defense as well as Aiden Taylor leaked out. He was deep down the field and looks like they're going to line up and maybe go for it. And a timeout's going to be called by Lyons as they were quickly up to the line of scrimmage and forces the Vikings to burn a timeout here. This tempo offense of Grayson is, is work wonders here tonight, especially the way they're using it. They're forcing the Vikings not only to play tempo by getting plays in and out, but the way they're throwing the ball sideline to sideline is forcing them to burn up a lot of energy and wear out. Let's check in with Nelly. Let's check in on the web game, make it a multi-screen experience all evening long. They are already at the break, and if you check in what's going on at Milton, the bands are out on the field. The bands are out on the field, but it's a good thing because it's halftime. Late field goal, second quarter. Milton is leading 17-14 over North Cobb, 3-1, and one, hosting 2-2. Two and two. All of our web games all season long brought to us by our friends at Breda Pest Management. Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of high school football back upstairs. All right, thank you, Nelly. Let's see if they stick with the... Now they're going to bring the punting unit out, out now after the timeout. So now that Lowndes called the timeout, brings the punting unit out, and Ortega, Ryan Ortega, going to punt again for a second time here in this game, standing at his 31. No rush. They'll try to set up a return for Fleming. Calls fair catch at the 10-yard line. 44-yard kick by Ortega. And the Vikings go back on offense from their own 10-yard line with three minutes to play here in the first half. Big set of downs here to keep this game close. You can't have another three and out. We've seen how fast 
this Grayson offense can score. So you give him a minute, minute and a half, let him, they can go back down the field very quickly. So if you're Lions, you can't get comfortable. You just feel like with 259 left, you can get to halftime. You're going to have to force some first downs and buy your team some time. Wow, they're changing quarterbacks. They've got the freshman in there, Jace Johnson. So Johnson hands off to Fleming. How about that? They go with the freshman here. 63195 freshman Jace Johnson, who's already got an offer from Florida AM. So he's got a lot of talent, but he's really young. And you wonder whether Marvin's pairs after that big hit in that last series of downs by Tyler Atkinson. Or if this is just a change of pace to try to throw the defense off by the Lions Vikings. Second down, handoff goes to Fleming again. And Fleming this time just a couple of yards on the play. Going to be third down, and the clock continues to move. Let's see if they let Jace Johnson throw the ball here. And we're going to check and see if... Parrish is okay. Remember, he took that big blindside hit by Tyler Atkinson on their previous series. So whether that's a, a change because of injury or a change just on coach's decision. Johnson going to throw it right in the middle. Intercepted or dropped at the 30-yard line. Nearly picked off by Uriah Points. Fourth down. Uriah points here, breaking on the ball. Good protection, trying to get the ball in there. The Cifa, excuse me, Leighton Proctor, and a nice pick on the ball there by points. Carson Page, who might set a record for punch tonight. Fair caught at the 45-yard line. That's a 38-yard kick by Carson Page. And that was his eighth punt of the first half. Another three and out by the defense. You have to tip the hat to them so far in this first half. Just not letting Lounge do anything offensively and setting your offense up here with 142, two timeouts, and the speed and pace that J.D. Davis has been showing on offense can easily walk this ball down into yeah. the end zone. Both teams have two timeouts remaining with a buck 42 left in the half. Dylan Elder back in there at running back, standing behind Davis. And I think they blew the whistle because the chains weren't set yet. First and 10 from the 45. Davis runs away from the defense, makes a couple of men miss, and close to a first down. How about the elusiveness of J.D. Davis? Taking a busted play here. Dylan Elder going on the wrong side for the handoff. <laughs> J.D. Davis is waiting on somebody to take the ball, but he improvises and pick up big yardage. Second down and short, first down throw. And that is Sanchez again with the catch at the 38. Eight-yard pickup, Sanchez with five receptions here in the first half for 56 yards. Nice job of Sanchez coming back and getting that ball for his quarterback. And this time he's just going to throw it away. And no place to go with it downfield, so wisely heaves it out of bounds. Nice job all night long, decision making once out of the pocket. Outside of that interception, a bad throw in the interception has had a spectacular night with his decision making has been Davis. He's thrown for 190 yards. He came in seventh and 7A in total yards passing for the season. Elder, first down and more for Elder. Still battling. Now we'll have a flag at the end of the play. 
two flags called on the play right there. Nice job of Elder bouncing the ball to the outside, getting in that alley. Maybe have a sideline obstruction call. Looks like that's what the side judge is explaining. Adam Carter does not look like he's enjoying himself tonight. Two flags on, the, on that play. One looks like it was maybe a sideline warning. The other came late. Maybe had a personal foul. We have two fouls on the play, both by the defense. First, we have sideline uh, warning against the defense. Then we hit after the play, personal foul on the defense. It's half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Might have been hands to the face on MJ Evans, the corner. Watch number five here. At the end, out of bounds. That oh, little yeah. shove right just, there. Just tackling him out of bounds, that's all. He was, he was already out of the field of play. So first and 10 now for the Rams. Elder trying to weave his way through the defense. And Elder going to get driven out of bounds by K.J. Massey. Nice job there by Massey fighting through that stiff arm to bring down Elder. Second down and 10. Heavy rush. Brooks going after him. And somehow Davis is able to get positive yards out of that. Looked like he was running an obstacle course. <laughs> Nice job by Davis. You know the situation. You want to cover the ball a little more, though. Kind of loose with the ball. So Grayson has called a timeout, so the clock has stopped back at the 34-second mark. And we got third down coming up. Let's check in with Nelly. Take you through the state, give you some scores that we won't be focusing on at the half. One surprise down in South Georgia. Metter with a lead over Irwin County. That one was a second quarter score and was a bit of a shocker. You look at a couple of the other numbers that have been put up. McEachern and Valdosta, that one's tied at seven. That one was another one of the games where a team from Region 1 traveling north to take a, another big road game to challenge themselves late in the year. McEachern and Valdosta, they're tied at seven. One more score out of Region 1, 7 8. Camden County leading Atlantic Coast out of Florida, 27 0. Jeff Heron looks like he's on his way to yet another win, Matt. Thank you, Nelly. Coach Bryant's team out to a 26 0 lead here, third down. And Davis coming out of the timeout, looking, scanning the field, flushed out of the pocket. Then a stop and throw to the, oh, intercepted at the goal line. Flag out on the play, but intercepted by Anthony Carter. Pardon me, that was Tyler Parker. Tyler Parker with the interception. Have two flags in the end zone. Early on in that scramble, those situations, a lot of time that holding call. Holding defense, half the distance to the goal. Replay third down. So that will wipe out the interception by Tyler Parker. So that is not an automatic first down as it is in the NFL. It'll be third down and about two. Have to be aware of the quarterback draw in this situation. We've seen Davis be able to scramble, make plays, improvise. He does have that quarterback design draw here. Spread to the right, trips right, spread to the top of the screen. Trying to pull the safeties out of the middle of the field with a head count by the offensive line. Third down and two from the five. 23 seconds to play in the half. Slings it out here complete to Elder. Elder's got the first down. Elder's got the touchdown. Dylan Elder takes it in from five yards out. 
32 to nothing. Grayson on top here late in the second quarter. Just a little wheel route out in the flat by Elder. Pitch and catch. Actually, defense is there. This is all about Dylan Elder wanting to get into the end zone. As you can see, running over two defenders. Very well defended here out in the flat. Just powering his way into the end zone for that touchdown. Third touchdown pass for J.D. Davis here in the half. And he also has a rushing touchdown. Let's see if they try to kick the extra point here. It's kind of been a mixed bag for them in that regard tonight. Yeah, they don't have the kicker out there. Running the swinging gate play, waiting to see. There's the kicker. And the kick is up, and the kick is good, and it's 33 to nothing. And that was Ryan. Ortega? No, let me see. Trying to. Oh, I don't know who that 18 was. They. Anthony Davis. Yeah, I don't think that was Anthony Davis, the 6'1", 192 sophomore <laughs> linebacker, although that's what the roster that's says. That's what the roster says. <laughs> but great job of capitalizing on the three and out by the defense. And Grayson, the offense comes out. We talked about with the time, a minute and 42, when they started that drive and two tied miles, very capable of going and put another touchdown on the board, and they did exactly that. So Adeyemi, who's handled all the kickoffs, is going to kick this one off, and it's going to go out of bounds, and that's going to give Lowndes the ball at the 35-yard line. At this point, I think they would be happy to take a knee and get to the locker room. It's not been a fun first half for them. Tough sledding in the first half, especially the way this Rams Free kick defense. In practice. On the kicking team, the ball will be taken 25 yards from where it's kicked, first down. This Rams defense has been attacking tonight. There's nowhere to run the ball, nowhere really to make a big play. We still have Chase Johnson, the freshman, in the game, you imagine. Marvin Parrish maybe dinged up from that big hit. Fleming ran into his own man. That kind of epitomizes the way this first half has gone for the Lions Vikings. And that is the end of the first half. And what a half it's been for the Grayson Rams. 20 points in the second quarter. Three touchdown passes by Mike Davis and a touchdown run. 28 yards of total offense for Lowndes. Tonight's coach's interview is brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, our original, your original neighborhood pizzeria. Nelly standing by with Santavius Bryant. Thank you, Matt. Time to deliver our halftime interview. 20 points in the second quarter. It's been methodical at times. It's been stifling at times on defense. It's been impressive on both sides of the ball. When you look at that scoreboard, what do you think? And I love it. I mean, we got guys out here doing what they came to do. Um, again, treated like a normal game, and guys are going out here and showing what we've been working for. At the same time, though, I know that you were looking at things. Not everything went perfect for you. What do you think you still need to work on here coming out with a 33-point lead? Uh, this one's about maturity. Can we come out after the halftime, still do what we need to do, and handle this thing with class? Thanks, Coach. Thank you. That's Coach Bryant. He's got a 33-point lead. Regions Halftime Show coming up just around the corner. Nikki Noto Palmer with scores, interviews, and more stuff. That's the official term. Here on the great GPB, stick and stay. We'll be right back to Loganville. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. 
Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. As morning light signals the start of business, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are right there with you. Georgia's EMCs are a partner in economic development, serving commercial accounts big and small that drive Georgia's economy. From leading industries we rely on to local shops we treasure. We support operations on the ground, care around the clock, and growth through the seasons. Lighting up good business, so business is good. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Whether you're an athlete or just out for a casual jog around your neighborhood, concussions are a common occurrence. Kirk Erickson, Cigna Healthcare General Manager for Georgia and Alabama, is here with tips on how to spot the signs of a concussion and how to treat them. Kirk, how common are concussions? Well, more common than we think. It's, it's not a visible injury that you might have. It's when you have head trauma and your brain actually hits the inside of your skull, causing a bruise. Ooh. So you might not have a broken bone or a cut that requires stitches and see, oh, I've got this injury. But when something like that happens, pay attention for the signs of a concussion because one could be present. How can someone spot those signs of a concussion? Well, you're looking at things like headaches, confusion, uh, blurred vision, nausea, maybe even uh, sensitivity to light or noise, but it can develop over time. It might not be immediate. Well, if you do get a concussion, what should someone do? Be willing to take time. It's not something that just you flip a switch and everything's better. This is the type of thing that can take four to six weeks or maybe even longer. But be honest with your coaches, your parents, and your doctor. Let them know how you're feeling and ease back into things. This is so important, especially because we are right in the middle of a high school football right. game. If you would like to learn more about concussions, please visit Cigna.com. presented by Regions get back in the game with Regions Bank. We're live in Loganville for the Grayson Lounge game. Right now the Rams are running all over the Vikings. The score at the half, 33 to nothing. The great state of Georgia produces some top talent out there on the field, many of which we're seeing tonight. However, there are a lot of student athletes putting in the hard work that we think might get overlooked when it comes to the recruiting world, and we want to see them get a little bit of extra love. That is what our segment, Make That Kid an Offer, is all about. Our Hannah Gooden has more. This week, we start with Carver Atlanta senior defensive end and outside linebacker Jamontez Hines. He has an impressive tally of 27 total sacks and seven so far this season. According to head coach Darren Miles, he's proven to be a relentless force in disrupting opposing defenses. In 2022, he was named the team defensive lineman of the year and second team all region. Someone make him an offer. Next up is Cherokee Bluffs senior tight end and defensive end Ryan Graves. After 19 months of recovering from multiple injuries, he's back for his senior year. In his first four games, he's had four catches for 115 yards, 11 pancake blocks, and 22 tackles with three tackles for loss. He has one offer, but definitely needs some more. And North Hall senior quarterback Tanner Marsh needs an offer. He's averaging 213 yards on 72% completion this season and 69 yards per game on the ground. He also has 11 TDs as a dual threat quarterback and in the Trojans record book. 
Great stuff as always, Hannah. You heard her. Go ahead and make that kid an offer. Well, now it's time to check in with our Georgia EMC scoreboard. Georgia is so much more than electricity. Here we go right now. Spalding over Balding. Baldwin at the half, 20 to nothing. Our web game of the week, North Cobb trailing Milton by three at the half. Cedar Grove and Cockwood County. Cockwood leading 36 to seven in the half. And then we've got Douglas County and Hughes. Hughes right now up 10, 20 to 10 in the second. Let's go to our next slide of scores. We've got Hoco. Oh man, they are leading 28 to nothing at the half. Mill Creek and Parkview tied up in the big orange jungle. That's an exciting game to watch. And then our game right here, Rams all over the Vikings, 33 to nothing at the half. And then we've got Sly County over Macon County, 13 to nothing in the second. That's your look around the state. Curious to see how some of these games turn out. We have to take a quick break, but stick with it with us because we have the You Save It Pharmacy Player Spotlight is next. You don't want to miss it. Stick it right here on GPB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. Today's conservation-minded consumer cares about where their energy comes from. Your local EMC cares too. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives offer renewable options for our members. In fact, our solar portfolio will produce enough clean energy to power more than 180,000 households. Striving to move the needle toward progress and position communities for the future. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Welcome back in. Time to check on some of the decisions that we make on a daily basis here in the state of Georgia. Catching up with our friend Olivia Hollis, the state coordinator from SAD. First question, obviously, Olivia, what is SAD and what does it stand for? So SAD is Students Against Destructive Decisions. We used to be Students Against Drunk Driving, but in 1997, the students decided to change the name to Students Against Destructive Decisions because it's not just about drunk driving, it's about making smart decisions overall. What are the benefits for students that become part of the family? Yeah, we have over 20 different programs on an array of things, um, traffic safety, mental health, and leadership development skills. And so they can kind of filter all of our programs onto what they want to focus on within their chapter. All right, so then the last question for those that want to become a part of the SAD family and all the great work you're doing, how do they do it? They can just go to our website at sad.org, start a MySAD account, and they can get started. Great information from our friends from SAD. State Coordinator, our friend here at GPB, Olivia Hollis. Another night prowling the city. In the shadow of the streets is where I belong. Yeah, the deal went through. We're gonna make a killing. During the day, I'm tortured by the thought of citizens not wearing their seat belts. Ah! It's why I don the belt and the mask. Oh yeah, we're gonna celebrate the night. Too often, people forget what it means to drive safely, but that's why I exist, to remind them. Sounds good. <clears throat> I'll see you guys there. Because safety is my burden to bear. What the? As the seatbelt. Welcome back to the Halftime Show. We're in Loganville this evening, but we have a special student athlete we want to introduce you to. She's from Albany. It's time for this week's Georgia Player Spotlight brought to you by You Save It Pharmacy. She comes from Albany, and the spotlight is on Monroe Comprehensive High School junior track star Mariana Wright. She's fast, she's focused, and it seems to be the only competition she has at the high school level is with herself. Here's her story. When Mariana first started running track, I knew that she would excel in the sport because of her character. 
There was only an eighth grader that was running faster than her. Um, her first year out on the track, never running before. And so that's kind of when I figured, I was like, oh, she's pretty good at this. <laughs> so. She's Olympic bound. I, I mean, right now, at, at her age, and at their age, she's better than a lot of those at the age she is now. In my mind, I know that I'm constantly racing against the clock. The time matters more than the competition, really. What a great story, an athlete. I'm sure there are some football teams out there that could use a speedy DB this season, right? Anxious to see how her junior year goes. Nothing but up for Mariana Wright. Stick with us because when we come back from break, we'll visit with Grayson's AD, Brian DeBerry. I'll chat with Nellie a little bit with some scores from around the state. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked right here on GPB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at GARedRibbon.org. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Hart EMC and 33 other participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives congratulate Hart County High School on winning the GHSA Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award. This award honors schools that exhibit exemplary sportsmanship during competitive events. Only one school in each region in each classification is chosen to receive this annual award. The GHSA takes into consideration all aspects of sportsmanship making the award a tribute to the entire community. Hart EMC is just so proud to offer this award. It just for all the students, the athletes, the staff, and the community of Hart County all together. They just show great sportsmanship on and off all the fields, and we're just so pleased to offer this award to them. Introduced in 2006, this award reinforces the GHSA's philosophy that everyone associated with high school activities, from athletes to spectators, should adhere to the fundamental values it represents. We firmly believe here that you know you win with class, you lose with class, and uh, just something we do to uh, exemplify what, what we expect to be a bulldog and to have heart, which is something we utilize. And so uh, just something that is very rewarding when you get recognized for it and when your peers within your region decide that, hey, you earned it. Earning the Sportsmanship Award means a lot to the team. It's such an honor. We prioritize being a good person, being a good teammate on and off the field, and we're very thankful for our community choosing us for this award. Georgia's EMCs and the 34 participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives are proud to sponsor the Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award. Congratulations to the Hart County community. He's in Georgia halftime show presented by Regions Get Back in the Game with Regions Bank. If you're just now joining us, it's halftime at Lounge at Grayson. The Rams right now running all over the Vikings, 33 to nothing at the half. And right now I'm with Grayson's athletic director, Brian DeBerry. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Let's get right to it. You have a new face this season as your head coach. He's previously been on staff. Tell me, what's it been like having Coach Brian as the head coach this year? Well, I'll tell you, all I've heard when we hired him is his youth is inexperienced. But we talked to him about the expectations don't change. Um, and I tell you, he works his tail off. Uh, the kids have bought in. As you can see, we've, we've improved week by week, and that's all I can ask for. Um, but he'll tell you, he's learned something new every day. I mean, he's a 29-year-old. Um, like I say, the expectations don't change, um, and he's rising, raising the bar with it. 
Now we know that the football program gets a lot of love around here, but talk to me a little bit about the other fall sports and what they have going on. We're having a great fall. Volleyball plays Brookwood Tuesday for the regular season region championship. Um, we're undefeated in the region, undefeated at home. Softball is 18 and 6 on the year right now, been ranked in the top 10 in the state. So it's been a great fall. Um, so we look forward to keep building. Um, looking for a great year here at Grayson. So athletics continues to thrive. Talk to me a little bit about the academic side of Grayson. We're very proud of our academics here. Um, we're an AP school of distinction. Um, our four-year grad rate's over 92%, um, actually 92.3. Um, so, you know, we, we have high expectations, like I say, to, to compete on the field. Um, but in the classroom, our teachers and students do a great job, and uh, we can compete with anybody. Is there anything else that you want to tell our viewers that might be unfamiliar with Grayson, unless you lived here or attended here? Oh, geez, you stumped me on this. Um, we're one of the few schools in Gwinnett that has a city hub. Uh, we've got the city of Grayson that's with us. Uh, we're about 3,500 students. So we're a large school. Um, but it's a great place, um, great people. Um, it's a great place to be here. All right, what about if you're, if you're coming around the school, right? You're, you're a visitor, you're attending a game. Where do you go eat? Oh, where do I go eat? Oh, I'm going home. No, uh, I'm not much of an out-to-eat guy. Uh, Chili's a couple times, Cracker Barrel. I'm, I'm pretty basic. I'm going to sit at home. All right. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you sharing your time with us. John, it's time to say goodbye to Brian, and John's going to come in. We're going to talk about a few of the scores. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. All right, Nelly, bring it in. Bring it in. We get to hang out. We get to talk about some scores sure. from around the state. Yep. What are some games that you're watching right now? Talk all to of me. them. I love all of my children equally. <laughs> we got an update. Colquitt County leading Cedar Grove now 36-21. That one's down at the Hog Pen Packed House there. One of the surprises of the night, Bainbridge leading Ware County 21-14. That one was 21-7. So Ware County coming back. That That is a pack a lunch and a dinner trip. Trust me. Web game. Let's show you what's going on with the web game right now. That one is third quarter. North Cobb and Milton have been going at it. Brought to us by our friends at Breda Pest Management. 841 to go, third quarter. Instant update right there, five minutes from your house. Woo, technology. North it's Cobb amazing. leading Milton by the score, 21-17. North Cobb started the scoring in the third quarter. They were down 17-14 at the break. They are now up 21-17. Brought to us by our friends at Breda Pest Management. Fitzgerald is leading. Sly County now up 27-7. McEacher now up 14-7 on Valdosta. Cook leading Jeff Davis. Dooley's winning. Northside's winning. Northgate and veterans are tied at seven. And I'm going to go track down a coach. Bye. They're playing. Bring them out. John, you got to go. <laughs> That'll do it for halftime. Don't forget to follow us over on social media. Find us at GPB Sports. Don't forget to scan that QR code you see right there on the screen. Who's going to win tonight, Lowndes or Grayson? And don't forget to answer our poll question right there. That'll do it for the halftime show. We'll have more with Matt, Wayne, and Nellie. Second half coming right up. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine When a car in front of you crosses over the line They're in your space, not looking at your face Distracted drivers all over the place hey. We will, we will buckle up Sing it! Say we will, we will buckle up At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Halftime here at Grayson and the 10th ranked Rams with a commanding 33 nothing lead on the Lounge Vikings match. Stuart along with Wayne Gandy up in the booth and 
What an impressive first half, and they got it going early in the first quarter in the 10-yard touchdown run by J.D. Davis. Common theme in this game, J.D. Davis making plays with his feet right there, running for the touchdown here, hitting Aiden Taylor down the back of the defense for the touchdown as well. That was the first of his three touchdown passes in the first half. Amari Alston got in there. Great burst of speed on the 25-yard touchdown run. And J.D. Davis taking over again, finding open receiver, Ethan Contreras out in the open for the touchdown for his second of the night throwing. That was a 22-yard touchdown pass, and they wrap things up on the short five-yard touchdown pass to Dylan Elder here right before the end of the first half and a 33 to nothing lead. And barring some offense here from Lowndes, we're going to have a running clock in the fourth quarter of this ball game. You see the dominance, just 28 yards of total offense for Lowndes in the first half, 322 for the Rams. You can see with uh, Lowndes, nine possessions, eight punts, that you know their inactivity on offense and defensively the Rams just smothered them. And offensively the tempo of Grayson being able to run and throw, as you can see, stats just jump off the page, 17 first downs in that first half. And only two for Lowndes. Uh, Carson Page was the really one bright spot for the Vikings in that first half with eight punts and a very good average. It'll be interesting to see if uh, the freshman, Jace Johnson, stays in there at quarterback in the second half as well as Adam Carter and the Vikings make their way out of the locker room. A lot of work for this Vikings team, starting with that young man having to replace Marvin, Marvis Paris, who uh, we still don't know whether it was injury related or just trying to change the pace. Coach's interview is brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, your original neighborhood pizzeria. Thank you very much, Matt. Down here, time to deliver the interview with Coach Carter. I know that your concerns on the line was the defense for Grayson getting to the quarterback. They stifled you for the full 24 minutes. Yeah, you know, that's a really good football team. You know, I know those kids, those kids play 100 miles an hour all the time. They're fast, they're physical, and we knew it was going to be a big matchup for us, and we needed to be able to handle the front, their front six. You know, like I said, we talked about that. We did not do that so very well um, in the first half, and so we tried to go in and find ways that we could kind of kind of uh, reduce some of that pass rush and some of that physicality up front that they got. So hopefully we'll be able to hold them off a little bit. And at the same time, uh, Marvis uh, took a real hard hit yeah. on a shot. Is he gonna, what's his status? Yeah, we're going to go with Jace Johnson in the second half, um, our freshman quarterback. And so see if he can give us a little spark throwing the football a little bit and uh, see what we got. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, thank you. all Back upstairs, Matt, going with the freshman to start the third quarter. Yeah, tough assignment, no doubt about it. But I think, you know, that's the that's a smart play right here. I mean, the game's 33-0. Likelihood you're going to come back and win is minimal. Let's see what the freshman can do in this situation. He's Def a big kid. Definitely was getting to that point. But Jay Johnson, a freshman, 6'3", 195. And it's all about still, as we talked about, regardless of who's that quarterback, this offensive line being able to offer some protection but really get this run game. They have capable backs uh, to be able to run the ball, especially with Smoke Fleming, but just no run where to run the ball uh, to take the pressure off of third and long, second and long for uh, the quarterbacks for Lowndes. Well, I don't want to put this kind of pressure on him, but at 6'3", 195, a big kid freshman reminds me of a, another freshman that we saw coming in play for Lowndes uh, back in uh, 2018, Ja'Curry Brown. Uh, Jakari Brown, pardon me, came in as a freshman late in that uh, his ninth grade season and kind of led him in the playoffs. And then the next year in uh, 2019, took him to the state championship game. Not saying that Jace has that ability, but that big size that he has, let's see what he can do. I'm quite sure he's been compared in that culture down there. Yeah. People thinking he's the next coming of Jakari Brown. All right, third quarter kickoff is brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Buckle Up Georgia seatbelts save lives and Aiden Andrews set to kick it off for the Vikings. Kick coming down at the 24 yard line. Elijah Miller 
up to the 28. That's where the Rams go on offense for the first time here in the third quarter. J.D. Davis, 16 of 18 passing for 195, three touchdowns, nine for 57 rushing and a touchdown, just a big first half and a continuance of what we've seen from J.D. Davis all season long. And his leadership and his decision-making has been spectacular in this game. Efficient. We've seen him on the interception, kind of all got away from him, but he has come in and, and picked up where we thought he would. What an efficient and impressive season he's had so far for Grayson. Handoff goes to Elijah Miller. And Miller's going to pick up about eight on the play. Nice job pulling there, 51. De Messier, De Messier once again. Nice little counter power play right there. Getting to the outside was Miller. Second down and two. Miller slips trying to make a cutback. Up 33 to zero, still playing with tempo. As you can see, that's their philosophy. They feel like they have the quarterback skill position that can continue to keep that pressure on you. And we're gonna have a running clock for the entire second half. The rule for Georgia High School Association is it's mandatory if it's a 30 point plus lead in the fourth quarter, but you can put it in play for the entire second half if the coaches agree to it. Going well, with a hard count there was Davis getting Coleman Lewis to commit jump offside for that free first down. Alston in there running back. And going to have a quarterback sack back at the 30-yard line. Montel Hundley with his first quarterback sack of the season. Just no one there to block him. Line sliding to the right. Free man, that's on Davis to get the ball out before Hudley can get there. Nice play by him, bringing down the elusive J.D. Davis. Second down coming up. Pass is going to be incomplete. Sinius claims he caught it, but he's not going to win that argument. Felt like he got his hands underneath the ball there with Sinius. Side judge, not a grin with him. Now we have a third and long situation here. This, you can see, long pass, ball is low. Now he hit the ground. It hit the ground right there. Third down and 18. Heavy rush. Davis eludes the two defenders. Trying to run to the sticks, not gonna get there as he's tackled in open space by Rigdon, the linebacker after a 10-yard pickup, and it's going to be fourth down. Nice stands there by the Vikings defense. Able to come out, start the half with some momentum, get a sack on Davis, some pressure, create third and long, and get off the field. Ortega on the punt for the second time. High kick, going to come down. Well in front of Fleming. And that's where the Vikings will take over with their first possession of the third quarter when we get back. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. 
I've been checking food labels for years. I like to buy local and I like to buy healthy for my family. So I started checking the labels on our clothes too. Did you know synthetic fibers like polyester are pretty much made of oil? No thanks. I look for cotton now, which grows right here in Georgia, a major source of the world's cotton. Cotton is natural, renewable, sustainable, and buying cotton supports Georgia farmers. Good enough for me and my family. Thirty-three, nothing. Grayson on top of Lounge. Eight twenty-seven to play here in the third quarter. Running clock. Take a look at Grayson's schedule. Three and one start after losing to Walton in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic. Last two opponents out of South Carolina and their big region opener coming up next Friday night. The seventh ranked Newton Rams off to a five and zero start. We'll be right here at Grayson Community Stadium in the Battle of the Rams. Should be an interesting matchup. Newton knocked off Westlake last week. Fleming loses a couple of yards on the opening snap. No snap, never ever able to get the ball off the ground there. It was Fleming. Center just snapped the ball short. Good job of, excuse me, uh, Jace Johnson and Fleming covering that ball. Fleming, 12 carries, 24 yards rushing in the first half. It was only a 14-yard punt by Ortega before the timeout, so Lowndes taken over on the plus side of the 50 as Fleming gets down to the 45. Third down coming up. Only two first downs for the Vikings the entire game. And a lot of that is because of this down and distance. They found themselves in third and long, consistent tonight. And that's what the Rams defense tried to create because they felt like they can bring the pass rush to get after these quarterbacks. Heavy rush coming off the edge and the keeper by Johnson and going to be tackled out in space. Seems that's like Chandler Burden, the linebacker, was blitzing off the edge. Chase Johnson expected maybe Fleming to take the ball. You can see Fleming looking to the sideline. Not sure if that was the right play. They're staying in the game and trying it here on this fourth and six. Now they're going to run the punting unit on. Hey, on the eight, don't back up. Don't back up. Carson Page going to punt for the ninth time in this game. Kicks it away, and they're not going to be able to pin him inside the 10 as it bounces into the end zone. A 43-yard kick by Carson Page, and the Rams going to bring it out to the 20-yard line. And with the clock being a running clock, you have to imagine how long do you keep J.D. Davis in the game? Do you start working your back up? Along that offensive line, we haven't talked a lot about tonight, but they've done a great job up front. Egby, Flynn, Hudson, the Messier, yep. the right tackle, Joshua Threat. You see 55, Walt Flynn right there. He's rated as high as the number one interior offensive lineman in the nation. They got him playing left tackle. And Santarius Bryant told us, you know, look, he can play any position on that offensive line, and he's the best <laughs> offensive lineman in the nation in my book. Sinius with the catch, and that'll be his fourth catch of the game. Big body in Flynn, 6'2", 300 pounds. You can see the quick feet. He can move and, and get up to the next level. Play got blown up by Coleman Lewis. A chance to call Coleman Lewis name a lot tonight. The three star junior. He's a complete linebacker as well. Just one of those guys, big, physical, can get out on the edge. You can see him up in the line now, pressuring the quarterback. Ball goes to Elder. That's a first down. Submarine tackle out here at the 43 yard line by KJ Massey. But that'll be a first down for the Rams. You can see Elder right there at the end of that run. Just a little swing route to the outside. Get it out to him quick. And right there, just getting his legs taken from him. It's, it's Elder. 
Ball goes out to Aiden Taylor right there as they have Elder take a seat on the bench. Remember, this is his first game back. He got hurt on the opening series of the season opening loss against Walton and had not played since then. So good to get him back tonight. He's looked good, too. Second down and nine. Aiden Taylor with another catch, and he picks up the first down. Very impressive, this receiving core and their ability to run out to the catch. Yeah. They're catching the ball at six, seven yards, but they're creating another three or four with Yak after the catch. And you can see, once again, working out in the edge to Alexander Sanchez. So just the way that Davis has spread the ball around. Sanchez has six catches. Taylor has five catches. Sinius has four catches. He keeps his wide receivers happy. Not always an easy thing to do. Elijah Miller with the short run. Third down coming up. As we talked about, one of the better tight ends in the country, Jalen Fox, number one, haven't really yeah. caught him in the passing game. He's doing, doing, he's out on the field doing a great job blocking. Uh, but and this, that's where Santavia says he's really improved his game this year. Knew that he was a dynamic pass catcher, but his blocking has improved tremendously. And right there on cue, it goes to Kylan Fox for his first catch of the game. You can see the strong hands right there, keeping the ball away from the defender. Nice route, just an out and up, has a big frame at 6'5", 220. So a big target, watch these hands, catching it all hand right there. Not even worried about the ball being pulled out. Handoff goes to Alston. Alston, his second touchdown run of the night. Thirty-one yard touchdown run by Alston, but I think we have a flag down on the field. Let's see if the call and the play is going to stand. And I can completely see what Coach Bryant was talking about with Amari Alston. <laughs> when he gets the ball in his hands, there's like three or four gears he gets to when he starts running. That's just so dynamic. So it looks like they're going to negate the touchdown run, the 31-yard touchdown run so by Alston. Two fouls on the play, both by the offense. We got an illegal block in the back. Or I'm sorry, illegal block in the back on the offense. That penalty's declined, and we also got holding on the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. So the ball will be brought back to the 41-yard line. Great dynamic between these two coaches. Great admiration for each one. Both had nothing but great things to say about each other. Santarius, Santavius worked for Adam for three years. Davis runs out of bounds. It's going to be second down. Coach Carter giving Coach Brian all the praise about being so young and taking on this job. Being having the maturity and the mindset to come in a program like this at only 28, now 29, and, and do such a great job. Alston with a couple of stiff arms finally runs out of bounds around the 30. Santavius Bryant told us, he said, even in practice, they stand around and wait to see what Amari Walston's going to do next. Definitely a young man with speed and quickness and great vision, dangerous with the ball in his hand. Going for the home run and broken up at the one yard line. MJ Evans with good coverage on Alex Sanchez, and it's fourth down. Running step for step with Alex Sanchez out on the on the edge. Not really sure. Sanchez looks like the ball just got went between his arms, but he's an impressive young man. When you look at his size, 
and, and his recruitment going up at 6'3", 188. Fourth down going for it. Going to swing it out here. It's caught by Elder, and Elder's going to dive forward and be close to the first down. Can't talk enough about these skill positions for Grayson and their ability to run after the catch. Hard catch there by Elder. Great to see him back in the game. We saw him leave a couple of plays ago. Great job by him even catching that ball and then being able to get another three or four yards after the contact. He comes up about a yard short, so the ball goes over on downs. We'll step aside as the Vikings get ready to come back out on the field. As morning light signals the start of business, George's electric membership cooperatives are right there with you. George's EMCs are a partner in economic development, serving commercial accounts big and small that drive George's economy. From leading industries we rely on to local shops we treasure, we support operations on the ground, care around the clock, and growth through the seasons. Lighting up good business, so business is good. George's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathe in your face, got me feeling so kind of way. In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future. Every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Buckle up, Georgia. 23 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Lowndes getting ready to go back out on offense with Grayson leading this one 33-0. And, Wayne, we've got some thick barbecue smoke hanging in the air over the field. Actually making me hungry up here, Matt. <laughs> I can send somebody over there. Uber eat something. DoorDash. <laughs> we got to have a Ram Dash or something in this stadium. What a great facility, great field, great environment. For football. Yeah, exciting environment here tonight. Grayson closing in on their fourth win of the season. And that was Fleming on the run on what was likely the final play of the third quarter. Grayson still having their starting defensive unit out on the field to end this quarter. Be interesting how far do the starters go as we start the fourth. <laughs> And that is the end of the third quarter of play. It's been all Grayson tonight. Rams 33-0 lead on the Lounge Vikings as we head to the fourth. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine when a car in front of you crosses over the line. They're in your space, not looking at your face. Distracted drivers all over the place. Say, we will, we will buckle up. Sing it. Say we will, we will buckle up.
Sweet Caroline just ended here at Britt Moody to get us ready for the fourth quarter web game. GPB.org slash sports. Right now, they're in. They're heading to the fourth quarter as well. It's back and forth, 35-24. North Cobbs put the pedal down in the second half. Scored first, scored often, and Milton in the dress blacks is trying to find a way to get back in the game down 11 with time running out in the town of Milton. You can watch that game. GPB.org slash sports. Make it a multi-screen experience all night long. Our web game all season long. Brought to us by our friends at Breda Pest Management. Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of high school football. And that's the only Neil Diamond song, Neil, uh, that, uh, Matt, I know that we can hear at a high school football game. Let's send it back up to you and Wayne for the fourth quarter. Thanks, Nelly. Second down and eight. Jalen Carter gets the ball. Gonna bring up third down for the Vikings. Jace Johnson, the freshman quarterback, has been inserted into the ball game since late in the second quarter. Trying to get some offense generated here for the Vikings. Not much success with that tonight. Third down and four. Jakari Fleming also. Tough night for him. 15 carries, 29 yards. Although he's going to run for the first down right there. That'll be their third first down of the night. Nice job running off of that left side. DJ Jones over there to left tackle. Smoke Fleming is a talented running back. Hasn't had a lot of room tonight to work. Defensive speed by this Rams defense is very impressive. All three levels, this offensive, this defensive line, McKenzie and Smith, full, we know how athletic they are, but this secondary will come up quickly and make plays. Nice job right there. Coming from that back end, uh, Jeremiah Stanton. Flanagan in there gets his second carry of the night. Kalen Flanagan subbing in for the injured Aleem Brown. Brown out tonight. Grant Lasky, their three-star tight end, committed to Coastal Carolina. Oh, pardon me, Charlotte. Out for the season, suffered a non-contact knee injury in practice this week, and he's done for the year. Also, they lost Keelan Hicks, one of their top wide receivers in the uh, Gadsden County game earlier in the year. Sixth play of the drive coming up, and I believe the Rams are going to come up with it. Scoop opportunity for McKenzie. Touchdown, Grayson. 15-yard scoop and score for Darren McKenzie. Just a tough snap right there, high, trying to hand the ball to Flanagan. It's Jace Johnson, not then the morning. ball just starts on bouncing the, around. And why the not, Darren touchdown. McKenzie, the big nose tackle, DN, scooping it up, having the best hands on the team right there <laughs> to scoop it up and get into the end zone. That's what you expect from your D lineman, right? To, yeah. to run down the field 30 yards and scoop the ball up and run it into a in, uh, touchdown. Well, he's undersized at 5'10", 255 for a nose guard, which impacts his recruiting. But someone take a chance on that guy. He's had a tremendous senior season, and he's a three-year starter for this Rams team. He's been starting since his sophomore year. PAT is up and good. And a 40 to nothing lead for the Grayson Rams. CBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Every game day celebration, every championship title begins here with hours of unseen work. As part of our commitment to education, Georgia's EMCs support the young athletes who play high school sports in the communities we serve. Empowering talent with scholarships, honoring sportsmanship, 
saluting the Game Changers. When we champion the energy behind the scenes, they can step into their future and shine. Georgia's EMCs, official energy provider of the GHSA. All right, what do you think, Jasper? Honestly, I think that polyester shirt's affecting your game. What? I think cotton would have been a better choice. Cotton? Yeah, it's come a long way, you know. Nowadays, cotton breathes and looks moisture great. Plus, buying cotton means supporting Georgia farmers. I think that's wonderful. Okay, sure, but what do you think about the putt? Oh, guess really hadn't thought about it. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. 40 nothing. Grayson on top of Lounge. The previous six meetings or five meetings that never been decided by more than 10 points. That's not been the case here tonight as you take a look at the Lounge schedule. And their next game is their region opener, and it's also the Wintersville Classic. Two weeks from now, when they travel across town to take on the Valdosta Wildcats, that'll be on October 6th. They'll have a lot of work to do before teeing up against their crosstown rivals. And Adam Carter is a tremendous coach. His record speaks for himself. He went 45 and 9 here at Grayson. He was 12 and 1 at Creekview the year before that. He'll get it right. Just not tonight. Ball coming down at the two. And Evans dancing instead of going forward goes down at the 15. Coach Carter being here the last couple of years, having great success, he, he understood what he had. He was facing. He knew yeah, these he guys knew what he was. He knew what he was walking into yeah. tonight. He knew the personnel <laughs> all too well. Great performance by this defense. A lot of the defensive starters still in the game. Trying to, a lot of times in these situations, they, they want to put a zero up when the clock ends as well. Flanagan on the carry. It'll be interesting, Grayson's next game against a, a Newton Rams team that really has kind of caught everybody off guard, no one it was really paying too much attention to Newton until they knocked off Westlake last week. And we saw Westlake in our first game of the season, so we know how good they are. But Newton at a 5-0 and night off before playing here at Grayson next Friday night. That should be a tremendous ball game between uh, two top 10 teams in 7A. Second unit energized for Grayson. They want to represent. You can see a couple of starters coming out. New bodies, fresh bodies going in for this defense. Still making it a tough job for Lowndes to be able to run the ball. First down catch for Jalen Carter. Gets the ball up close to the 30-yard line. Fresh set of downs for the Vikings. <laughs> nice job, still stopping the run, regardless of who's in on the defensive front. Don't talk enough about the job they've done up there tonight. Malik Lane now in there running back. Big hit in the middle there by number 50, Jay Aziz. Brings up third down and five. 
Again, Lowndes going with their freshman quarterback tonight after the junior Marvis Parrish took a big hit. Was having trouble moving the team uh, in that second quarter. Catch made by Jeremiah Jones at the 39, and that'll be another first down for the Vikings, showing their first signs of life on offense really tonight. Nice job there with Jace Johnson sitting in the pocket, taking the hit right there, delivering the ball to the outside to Jones. Only a freshman. He has a lot of ways to go, but nice job of him stepping in, taking this pressure, having to go to the sideline, as you can see here in this fourth, to get the play in. I want to make sure he's on the same page. That was a catch by Proctor out on the edge. Actually lost a yard on the play, however. Second down and 11. Lane right up the middle. Malik Lane with the first down run across the 50 into the 49. Lane picks up 12. And a few big runs here by Lyons up front. A little draw action, running through tackles, running through defenders, running over the safety there was Lane. This is the six feet, 190, the junior. And they get a little open space for the running backs. Flanagan back in there at running back, picks up a couple of yards on the play. Crashing down Anthony Davis from that wheel position. Young sophomore, big future for him as well for Grayson. 6'1", 192. He has eight offers, including your alma mater, the Auburn Tigers. War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Got a big one tomorrow against the Aggies, right? Aggies on deck, Georgia Bulldogs coming in week after that. This time Flanagan gets driven back, and again it's Anthony Davis in on the tackle. Flanagan might have hurt himself a little bit. You can see he's kind of holding that left arm down, now showing some flexibility in it. Tenth play of the drive coming up for the Vikings. Still having to go to the sideline. Chase Johnson, as you can see, having him running on late. Looks like he's a late player to the huddle. Yeah. But he is the commander in chief back there. Third down and eight. Going to the air and the intercepted. Intercepted at the 35-yard line as the ball's going to go over, ending the drive. So a nice drive by the Vikings, but it ends in an interception as the Rams going to get it back. That was Eric Johnson, the safety, with the pickoff. Rams have it when we get back. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Mariana first started running track, I knew that she would excel in the sport because of her character. There was only an eighth grader that was running faster than her, um, her first year out on the track, never running before. And so that's kind of when I figured, I was like, oh, she's pretty good at this. So. She's Olympic bound. I, I mean, right now, at, at her age, and at their age, she's better than a lot of those at the age she is now. 
In my mind, I know that I'm constantly racing against the clock. The time matters more than the competition, really. Welcome back to Grayson Community Stadium for the final 327. Let's take a tour around the state and let you know who's won, who is in the barn. Quickly, Cook, a winner over Jeff Davis, 21-6. Thomas County Central put 55 on Godby. Wayne County, a winner over Jenkins tonight, 9-0. Coffee shuts out Richmond Hill. Cairo, a winner. Keeping an eye on Bainbridge right now, upsetting Ware County in Bainbridge, 35-21. Go to gpb.org. Don't forget to download the GPB Sports app. Scores and finals all night long on the app for the final 327 back upstairs. All right. Thank you, Nelly. We're halfway through the regular season for a lot of teams tonight. This being game number five. Some have already got to that level. Newton Rams, who the Grayson Rams will be hosting next Friday night already at five games Elijah Miller gets to carry and Grayson is three plus minutes away from being four and one on the season Lowndes will be three and two heading into the Wintersville Classic in two weeks JD Davis out of the game Travis Burgess the sophomore in 6 4 192 we we're wondering when they might have a switch at quarterback look like they have kind of taken out all the starters Roger Miller still in there. He's the leading rusher coming into this game for his team, but with Elder back and now Austin, they have a three-headed monster back there that is shown to be very capable. Yeah, they got a good-looking running back room, and then they've got a dynamic quarterback with a powerful arm that can spread the ball around to a great group of wide receivers. Now, this Grayson team's only going to get better as the season goes on. And they've got a great chance to advance deep into the playoffs. Burning as much clock as they can as we wind it down under 10 seconds on the play clock. And Burgess is going to end up keeping the ball after miscommunication on the snap. He gets dropped before he can pick up the first down. That was Anthony Martin coming up to make the tackle for the Vikings. Nice job of Martin out in the open field. I have to call Coach Bryant. Seemed that everybody got taken out but the offensive line. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> They never like to take us off the field, but what a great job they have done tonight as well. Come on, Wayne, you guys need the work. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoyed our conversation with Santavius Bryant this week. I was really impressed with him. Of course, he's 29 years old, and a 29-year-old head coach anywhere, much less at a place like Grayson, makes you wonder. But after talking to him, I had no doubts as to why he was the head coach here. He is a sharp young man in full command of this program congratulations to him getting win number four tonight had that demeanor like he was very sure where he wanted to go he had some goals in his mind real focus as you can even see right there as we came out watching warm-ups really couldn't tell him part of the groove he looked so young but what a great mind and a great attitude to be a head coach got a beautiful family his wife Lashana his son Santavius Jr. his daughter Sailor Breeze have been embraced by this Grayson community and why not got a great football team got a great football program and tonight a commanding and resounding victory over Lowndes shutting down the Vikings 40 to nothing 415 yards of total offense for the Rams tonight such a big offensive performance and it was not just about the athletes not just about their quarterback but their tempo I think the tempo that they played at tonight just really discouraged the Vikings and it wore on them wore on them and the pressure they kept the pressure and then defensively just flying to the ball very little run, running room and, and nowhere to go with the pass. We're going to step aside and come back and talk to Coach Brian and also award our Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game right after this. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. 
live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well being. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Back at Grayson Community Stadium where the Rams improved to 4-1 on the season ahead of their big region opener against 7th ranked Newton next Friday night right here on this field. Impressive performance by J.D. Davis, their quarterback. 299 yards of total offense for him tonight. 237 in the air. Three touchdowns. Also had a rushing touchdown. And time now to send it down to John Nelson. Sanding by with head coach Santavius Bryant. Thank you very much, Matt. Time to deliver our post-game interview with our friend. Thanks to our friends from Johnny's Pizza. It was really interesting. I know that the love that you have for Coach Carter and for everything there, and one of the first things you did was say hi to the family. You're, you're really a part of, this was, I mean, literally, it was two families out here tonight, but you ended up with a dominant win in going over that other family. Yes, sir. Well, first off, I got a lot of respect for that ball club. A bunch of guys on that staff that I worked for and got a bunch of respect for. A bunch of guys that we won games with here, uh, won state championships with here. So, again, that, that's a good team, man. They're going to do nothing but get better. That's a great staff over there as well. So when you look at this dominant effort tonight, I know that you had a game plan coming in. How close was the game plan that you had to the game plan that worked its way out here tonight? How close was it to everything that you laid out? Uh, man, again, just over the course of the game, some things changed. Some were the same. Again, it was all about adjustments. Um, they did some things that we weren't expecting them to do. Um, I'm sure that we did some things that they didn't expect us to do. So I think on both sides, just a ton of adjustments. And at the same time, dominant offensively, it seemed like it was flowing and floating out there at times. What was it like for you? Did you have a chance to almost, did you have a chance to enjoy this game tonight at all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime our kids get to come out here and play, man, they play well. Again, I enjoy it just for them. Um, again, just I just enjoy watching them come out here and just get to it every Friday. And at the same time, I know for you, it's all about the relationships. You and I talked about your relationship with Phil Jones from your time at Shorter, learning from him. What's it like to have the relationship with this team behind you? I mean, man, it's incredible. I mean, it's a great community. Again, great kids, man, a great school. We're under great leadership. So, again, it's just a blessing to be here. Thanks for your time. Congrats on the big win tonight. Thank you. Hot tag. Let's go ahead and bring in our Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game. J.D., yes, please. Thank you. Disposing of the gum. Very nice. Uh, Georgia Cotton Commission, the natural choice for Georgia. Our natural choice for player of the game. 299 total yards, four touchdowns. J.D., what was it like out there for you tonight? Uh, it was a really good feeling. Uh, I'm truly just blessed to be in the position all week. Uh, the coaches, they just put it down our head. You know, just focus on ourselves. Now, we had a great game plan, and I'm glad we were able to execute. So what was it like out there for you back there? Obviously, you could pass, no worries. You could run, no worries. It seems like access was there, and you guys were finding the holes and all of the weaknesses out there. What was it like out there for you at quarterback? Oh, like I said, you know, I'm really blessed to be in this position. I got a great support staff around me, coaches, uh, you know, the offense line blocking their butts off, receivers catching everything, running backs running hard, defense, special teams putting us in a great position. So it was really easy on me. You know, I just had all those people around me, and I just did my best. Blocking their butts off, huh? Yeah, that's what they did today, for sure. When you look at that scoreboard and it was as dominant a win as it was, was it surprising to you? Was that number surprising to you at all that it was as dominant a margin as it was? Uh, no, sir. You know, that's something that uh, the coaches just, like, has just taught us. Like, dumbness is our standard, and that's what we should be chasing each and every day. And you certainly did that tonight against a very, very tough opponent from South Georgian Lounge. J.D. Davis, our natural choice for player of the game, 299 total yards, rushing and passing, responsible for four touchdowns. Matt, dominant win tonight here at Britt Moody for Grayson as they knocked off Lounge. No doubt it was, Wayne. They, they, the dominance is their goal, and they achieved their goal tonight. On both sides of the ball, the defensive line, the offensive line, and the quarterback play of J.D. Davis, just spectacular. 40-0, the final 
Grayson Rams now four and one on the season. And now for Wayne Gandy, John Nelson, Nikki Noda Palmer, our producer, Lynn Diamond, our entire fabulous GPB sports team. I'm Matt Stewart. So long from Grayson Community Stadium, where the Rams win big. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine when a car in front of you crosses over the line. They're in your space, not looking at your face. Distracted drivers all over the place. Say, we will, we will buckle up. Sing it. Say we will, we will buckle up. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. When Mariana first started running track, I knew that she would excel in the sport because of her character. There was only an eighth grader that was running faster than her. Um, her first year out on the track, never running before. And so that's kind of when I figured, I was like, oh, she's pretty good at this. So. She's Olympic bound. I, I mean, right now, at, at her age, and at their age, she's better than a lot of those at the age she is now. In my mind, I know that I'm constantly racing against the clock. The time matters more than the competition, really. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Today's conservation-minded consumer cares about where their energy comes from. Your local EMC cares too. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives offer renewable options for our members. In fact, our solar portfolio will produce enough clean energy to power more than 180,000 households. Striving to move the needle toward progress and position communities for the future. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity.